Peter's health took a turn for the worse, and I wondered if she had any more hands available, like the Indian goddess Durga. <laughs> Shortly after, I watched Ingrid change under enormous stress. The caterpillar, then a butterfly, began to emerge from its cocoon, probably unaware of what was to come. She took on a diploma in art therapy. In an act of bravery, in my view, she deepened her learning, and in doing so, she deepened her understanding and her compassion for herself, her son, and those around her. And we were discussing this before I came here tonight, and she said that it was her only option was to find a way to accept the, the enormous grief. My mother had a saying, and it never leaves me, she's departed now, if you love something but it won't stick, let it go, and if it's meant to be yours, it will return. Anyway, very shortly after this, a stream of miracles seemed to emerge as Josh pulled himself out, or did he? I'm still not sure. I'm the storyteller, you're just looking. This is your story to tell you. Did I see Josh reach up from the gun to that extended hand and clamp on tightly? Or did he find a ladder? That's for you to tell. I don't know what the answer is. But what I know is what Ingrid did. She hauled hard and he landed in the studio with her. He hadn't been a painter before. She thrust a brush into his hand and turned him to the canvas. As far as I'm concerned, she then said to him, carve it out, your suffering. Make it known here in this safe place. Art is not an all-forgiving mother, it's a mirror that tells no lies. Art then grabbed him and took over and sucked him into its voluptuous capacity of endless possibilities to be expressed. He thus became an artist. That's how they get it. <laughs> 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 Nearly done. <laughs> Art can hold all sorts of messes safely. It's a miraculous container. Madness lives inside it without straight jackets or drugs. Just coffee, lots of it. <laughs> it thrives. Josh soon discovered what it could do for him. It's a magnificent story. Ingrid cut her art therapy apprenticeship in a most rewarding way. She could see that it's not the therapist or the artist that is the genius, it's the container of art that holds us. I look at Josh's direction and I see his work now is about bringing the symbolic order to a world of far too many crazy options and ideas. He simplifies it into powerful lines, colours and forms as the new commander of his own universe. A universe he can command and control. He brings an Apollonian order missing from his life for so long. The paradox again is that art can do this. It can bring chaos into harmony and turn it into a song, a thing of beauty. What once threatened to eat us, we can tame with art. And then we have Ingrid's work, which says, and I think of her sending this message to Josh, look at the genius of nature. Look how beautiful she is. Look at her curves, her trees, her skies, her single seagull, bringing the wisdom of Demeter, the goddess of nature. I know she herself, in regards to the word metamorphosis, was telling me that for her, she dissolves into the landscape, into her work. She becomes the metamorphosis, like a landscape is. It's always changing and growing and evolving. And here they both are. Perhaps we should make sure we toast to the gods and spirits of art that brought them here safely after a very tumultuous journey, a true metamorphosis. Thank you. Go on, have a go. Have a question. Have you 
Kevin, that's fine. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah, well, quite possibly. Um, I don't. That's not. What, that's not my intent when I when I paint. But when I I like nice simple lines, uh, simple colours. That's that's quite powerful. So I see it as a train. I see it as uh, just colour combinations that resonate with me. I think all these paintings that, um, well, certainly that I have done, are all part of the psyche anyway. It's about all our experiences. It's about our past experiences. Um, so everything is so integrated anyway. Um, so uh, it's very much part of it. Yeah. Everything we do, everything we look at, is all part of what happens here on the canvas. Yeah. This might be a secret. Sorry. <laughs> this might be a secret. There's just lots of light underneath. Ooh, and lots of competition between mother and son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, who can get the best colour? <laughs> who can get the best colour? Well, me, of course. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've got a question for Joe. Do you have a particular emotion when you paint? That is like integral to the whole picture, or yeah, quite often, yeah, quite often, often I'll, um, you know, if I'm feeling down, if I'm thinking about my old life, uh, it's quite often when I'll produce something quite amazing, uh, just with this, with my, you know, with my colours. Um, but yeah, that's quite right. Music as well. I've got to have the right type of music for them to get me in that right uh, zone. So will that be something for the whole of the painting? Well, it'll start off that way and it might take another direction. But um, yeah, I guess it starts with um, with the mood of the sky, really, for me. And if I'm feeling you know, dark or you know, if I'm reminiscing on things that have happened, you know, I'll, I'll have quite a dramatic powerful sky uh, and then I'll just I'll go from there and then the painting will take the same direction after that. Um Ingrid I've got a question. Oh have you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can Kim 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 Kim. Kim. <laughs> um in, we haven't got three hours. No, I have, I have a question and um when even though you know I was talking to you through this process with, as an artist, but what I always found it really strange when you were going through a lot of the, you know, because we look at artists and they go through as many crappy parts of their life as anybody, they're just humans, right? And and sometimes more because their work rests on their ego, so, you know, we judge very much by what we produce, you don't, you know, everything you do goes on show and you get judged, it's a really Absolutely. weird world. Yeah. So when yeah. you were going through the worst of all this, you know, what... How did that affect your your work in the studio when you went to your canvas? Mm. Well, it, well, clearly, I think it was a place for me to put my emotions, and I think uh, that is reflected in my art, um, and maybe in subtle ways, maybe in not so subtle ways, but I think that's what art is anyway, and that's what painting is. It's, it's your emotions, it's the things that you're feeling at, at any given time. And you're, however you're feeling at, at, on any day when you're in the studio is what you're, what you're um, representing on campus. I've got a question. I'm sorry to take over, but I have another question. <laughs> and you'll all benefit from it. But you know how look, Ingrid did art therapy as yeah. a she's trained in art therapy, and I thought it was really interesting because she did. I went and got some of her. She did it to me, and it was really weirdly amazing. It blew open a problem I'd had since childhood and it just came out, it was scary. And I've used art all my life to express and explore problems that I've had. So what, you know, when you did your art therapy um, course or a diploma, how, how, how did you put this together in your studio? Like you were just saying you had the therapeutic process, Josh was, you know, talking about therapeutic process of actually doing the work, it was essential, you know, essential, there's colors mm -hmm. and things. So what, 
you know, how do you bring that together? Like, yeah. Well, I, I don't really know how to answer that other than, you know, the art was where I, I was able to put my emotions and able to, um, you know, maybe able to just escape uh, those feelings of um, not wanting to stay in that place of despair. And um, yeah, so the paintings were somewhere I could put that. Um, well, it really was escapism, I guess, for me at that time. Well, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Josh, did you find similar escapism, like a container where you could escape? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, yeah. it is a wonderful tool for um, art therapy, but also art as therapy. Yeah, there's a difference. Art, there is a difference between art therapy and art as yes. therapy. And I think what maybe both of us were going through was art as therapy. Yes. And I know, you know, for Josh, I think that um, well, the art therapy was what um, enabled me to um, help Josh through that process was knowing that we are our own healers. We are our own healers, mm -hmm. and uh, and um, and so you know it was uh, the art therapy was so uh, so fabulous for me because I was able to just stand back and let him find his own way and just provide the tools. Basically, is what an art therapist does anyway is just provide the tools, the throw the paint and canvas at him, and um, not, not tell him how to do it or. Yeah, so allow that um, personal uh, expression. Um, yeah. Josh, have you painted before you made this turn into the studio? <coughs> actually, uh, well, I was more into drawing, actually, like leading up to yes. uh, when I made that decision to leave my old life, I'd actually got into just doing drawings and symbols and stuff. So it actually started just before I went into recovery. Yeah. And then even when I was, um, during my, uh, Rehabilitation. Yes. I, we uh, we had art classes there, and I took to that straight away. It's all I wanted to do. Uh, so it's actually a, a part of, yeah. um, of the program. Yeah. That's even music and uh, yeah, and so it's either music or art for me. And um, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to do both. Yeah. Yeah. You did also grown up with that. You, you know, you've always been part of a studio and all this. So, yeah. So that that would have been maybe going back to maybe that time. It's a good story because it could be. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll just shut up a little bit. Because right. that could have ended very badly and it doesn't have to. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering if they choose how long have you actually been painting in this view? Myself? Yeah. About three years. Wow. Okay. A bit over three years. Three and a half years. Amazing. And well done. Thank you. Yeah, yeah well done. Thank you. Yes. Maybe not the exact moment, but uh, I actually gave art therapy a go. So I was out of rehab and I was just doing a lot of painting at home and then decided to take on this course as well. So I actually did the first few uh, months of this art therapy course and <laughs> I was actually the guinea pig uh, in front of the class. I was art therapized, I guess. and. Um, and like I, I was a little bit skeptical, so I was just doing my drawing, and um, the uh, facilitator was asking me to turn my work around. And oh, do you see anything else in it? And then for just it just happened. I just saw something in my artwork that I'd done that um, it was like a bridge, uh, or sorry, it was a bridge. It was a crossroads. And um, then I realised right then that I wanted to to do art, not not so much the art therapy. I just wanted to paint. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Josh, yeah. is it fair to say that art is becoming a new addiction? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Great. Great addiction. One addiction. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good place for obsessive compulsive or just obsessive people <laughs> to hide. We hide in there. Yeah. Otherwise, there's trouble in the world. <laughs> no, I, I love it. it wouldn't, life wouldn't be the same without yeah. um, without spending time in the studio and creating um, these these pieces. And, and as I was saying to a couple of people before, I don't paint really for you know for the profession of it or to, to make money from it. I paint because I need to paint because I love it, and I'll only paint something that I'll be really happy to have on my own wall. Okay. Just another question. 